Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the January 10th, 2022 regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners. Uh, Mr. Berman, if you would call the roll. Commissioner D'Amelio. Here. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Here. Commissioner McCluskey. Here. Commissioner Cavender. Here. Commissioner Quinn. Here. Commissioner Hart. Here. Commissioner Wexler. Here. Commissioner Trombetta. Here. Commissioner Holmes. Here. Chief, if you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Before we get to the next uh, item, let me just uh, announce two things. One, uh, the uh, board met in executive session at 6.30 p.m. to discuss uh, several matters, including legal matters, uh, all subject to executive privilege. Uh, the, the second uh, thing I want to announce, uh, three of our commissioners tonight are participating uh, by Zoom. We do have a quorum uh, present here um, uh, in the uh, township building and uh, uh, provided that we always have at least a, a quorum of the board present, uh, hybrid meetings like these are approved uh, by state law. So uh, certainly with what we're dealing now with the uh, explosion in uh, COVID and Omicron infections, this is the uh, right way to do things, but we just want to let everybody know that it is also the legal way to do things. Um, that said, we are now um, to the Citizens Forum. Uh, we first... Um, have 20 minutes for any registered speakers, and then we invite speakers on any agenda items. Mr. Berman, has any um, Haverford Township resident registered to speak? I have no registered speakers. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Uh, do we have anybody in the audience who would like to speak on an agenda item? Seeing no takers, uh, we will move to the next item on the agenda. This will be a discussion. Uh, this will be an introduction of Haverford Township's facade improvement program uh, funded by the American Rescue Plan Act. And uh, we welcome to the podium Gene Angel and Don Kelly of the Haverford Partnership for Economic Development. First, you'll get me for a couple seconds. <laughs> First, we get Amy Cuthbertson, <laughs> our finance director, for a couple Just seconds. Just for a few seconds. So good evening. On a staff level, you may remember that we discussed our ARPA spending structure late last summer. And then also as part of the 22 budget, we incorporated into that um, a facade improvement program for local businesses. So for the, fast, the past few months, a small steering committee of myself, zoning officer Kelly Kirk, um, past president of HBD, uh, Don Kelly, and the current executive director, Gene Angel, have been working to formalize a plan to put in place to allow ARPA monies to again flow into the business community and help them out as they rebuild from economic losses sustained from COVID-19. Uh, the program would include matching grants for the purpose of promoting economic recovery and community revitalization through aesthetically improved business properties. In this program, the township would match dollar for dollar up to $10,000 for improvements to local commercial properties. We hope this program again demonstrates the township's commitment to local businesses. This will be a very brief introduction to the program to allow for commissioner feedback and any questions while we continue to formalize some of the administrative functions that will go into administering the program. Uh, we had hoped to roll this out in January, but I'm thinking more realistically, maybe February, just to allow for feedback from you. And before uh, I finish, I'm just going to thank Don and Jean and Kelly for participating in getting this program to where it is today. And I'm going to turn it over to Don, whose background in planning has been instrumental to us getting this plan thus far, and he's going to take it from here. So, Don. Thank you, Ms. Cuthbertson. Mr. Kelly, good to see you. Happy New Hi, Year. Hey, nice to see everybody again. Congratulations, all. Uh, I'll describe the uh, program design features, and then Gene Angel will discuss how it will be administered. So um, the uh, key features are, first, who and what is eligible for this funding. So eligibility requirements include location within the township, the applicant being the owner of the property or a business or nonprofit tenant with the approval of the owner of the property, 
having uh, a current business license, being current on township filings and taxes, and not being a municipally funded institution like the library. <clears throat> Additional eligibility requirements include the project to be consistent with all applicable municipal ordinances, correction of all existing code violations to the exterior frontage of the building, uh, and use of properly licensed contractors. So examples of eligible uses, we delineate, identify specific uses that are definitely eligible, but it's not limited to these. <clears throat> so it's for permanent or semi-permanent fixtures, including but not limited to such improvements as masonry, professional cleaning, woodwork, removal of false facades, facade lighting, signage, windows and doors, painting, awnings, architectural metals, railing, dumpster screening, landscaping and correction of deferred maintenance or code violations all on the front exterior. There are explicit ineligible uses as well, including interior improvements, roofs, sidewalks, driveways or parking lot repairs, plastic or digital signage, reimbursement for any projects already completed or underway, new construction and work that fails to meet the design standards of the program as determined by the grants committee, which leads now to the question of design standards. Because the ultimate purpose of this matching grant program is economic recovery the program's approach to design standards is broad, uh, as opposed to being detailed and restrictive. We're trying to get the money out there. We're trying to have a visible effect on the appearance of our business areas. <clears throat> that said, the assumption of the township and its partner, HPD, now going under the name of Discover Haverford, is that quality improvements to the business districts have a more positive and lasting economic impact than improvements that are in poor taste or use inferior materials. Therefore, the basic standards of design that apply to this program are first, that the project must improve the aesthetic appearance or functionality of the building. And secondly, that the improvement should be in harmony with or elevate the overall character of the business district. So I'll turn it over to Jean now, and then we'll entertain all the questions you may have. Thank you. So I'll be managing the program at Discover Haverford, and we're asking applicants to meet with me before they submit their application. The purpose for that would be I can kind of provide the guidelines on the application, although that'll be also on our website, uh, ensure that their project meets our requirements, be a sounding board for ideas, answer any questions, and let them know that the design committee of um, Discover Haverford's Windows and Facades Committee is available to them. So we have worked with businesses before, giving them suggestions. We worked with Katz Pharmacy and other places. The applicant will submit their completed application to Discover Haverford, and that's gonna need to include a photograph of the entire existing facade, a photograph showing the facade plus the neighboring buildings, project illustration, so professional drawing, a detailed sketch, or a notated photo. If the change of the footprint or size of signage are part of the project, dimensions must be included. A signed agent's affidavit, if the property owner, um, if, if the applicant is not the property owner, they need a signed affidavit, affidavit that they would submit with the application. And they need two contract estimates. So then we'll review the project proposal and either approve, reject, or provide feedback to modify the project. And then, Discover Haverford in conjunction with the township will issue an award letter. The project work can only begin after the receipt of the award letter. So that's important if you're speaking with businesses who are interested, don't have them get started with something and then apply. We really need to uh, approve the design first. And then the reimbursement process requires photographs of the completed work, copies of invoices, proof of payment, and on, an on-site inspection by me. And then they will set, the township will send reimbursement checks once we've determined that the project's complete and the paperwork's in order. 
The grants committee um, currently is six members, although we've talked about having seven. So we have Amy and Kelly, Don and I, Suzanne Baruca, who's a member of the Historic Commission. She also has a degree in graphic design, so she'll be great. And then we wanted a representative from zoning, and that's Jesse Poynton. He's also an architect. Um, we talked about maybe getting a, another person who, who has expertise in facade design or an architect, but I think Jesse can fill that role currently. And we may be looking for another person, but we kind of said six could also work. So thanks. Thank you, Ms. Angel. Can I, can I ask a question, Larry? Uh, yes, Commissioner D'Amelio. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm trying to understand this. And I don't, you know, from a legal standpoint, maybe, so maybe it's a solicitor too. Um, so Discover, Discover Haverford would reject a, a, uh, a proposal from uh, someone who wants to open up a, a store, or is that right? No. They can reject it? But what about if we had to go to zoning? Is my, that's my question. Um, well, like, how would they? I'm sorry, Commissioner D'Amelio. I was just going to clarify. No, this this committee, this subcommittee, is mere, is merely to assist an applicant to make sure that they get all the um, the qualifications. This we are in no way able to tell somebody they can or can't open a business. This is purely just to improve commercial property in all the the entire township. It's to help them, but they can still go before the zoning board if need be. Oh, this has nothing to do with zoning. Yes, they have to, an applicant has to achieve any and all permits and approvals before they do anything structural. Our <coughs> program here, as you can see, it's only up to $10,000. So this is really geared towards those smaller aesthetic improvements that really can make a big difference, but not really structural, just due to the cost. Okay, I get it now. Thank you. Okay, sure. Um, Dean, Don, uh, um, just a question. Is there a preference for businesses that are in a block of businesses, let's say, as opposed to a, a, let's say, a Westgate pub that stands by itself yeah. or the um, head nut, if those businesses are not necessarily in the middle of a business? In the district, district. right. Yeah, we, we discussed that issue and decided it would be open to all businesses in the township. Um, we use the term business district a number of times because that's uh, where there are concentrations of businesses and where the appearance of one can really have an impact on the, the value and success of adjacent businesses. But it's not limited to businesses within business districts. Okay. And at this point, we have funding for up to 10 projects. Is that what I'm uh, reading? Well, uh, no. Be, uh, well, I'll let Amy answer that one. In the budget, as it stands and was approved, we allocated $250,000, which would be theoretically, you're exactly correct, 25 awards of 10000 if each of those applicants asked for the max. And what would happen is I, I would love to see this really take off and be successful, and if we get up to 25 applicants, we would come to the board at that point and ask to open a phase two, similar to what we did with Back to Business, and then open it up for additional monies. So that's that's our plan. But the, the initial 250 is already in the budget that was adopted. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Mr. Kelly or Ms. Angel, uh, whichever uh, uh, of you two is the person to answer this or both of you, um, could you just describe to me, um, are there objective standards applied to the question about um, the benefit of the facade to the neighboring businesses? Or you mentioned that there's a, that there's a qualitative analysis that takes place. And I'm right. just curious, what is the, um, what are the benchmarks for that analysis? Yeah, it, this is where it's a little um, matter of opinion. Um, we looked at models of this program elsewhere and we borrowed heavily from Ardmore, for instance. It's a very common program around sure. uh, the Commonwealth and around the country. Uh, when there's an historic district, they get very specific in terms of uh, compliance with historic district standards. There are standards, nationwide standards. But we're not dealing with historic districts. So uh, we're not uh, bound to those kinds of standards. But we want, to, we, we want um, the business or the improvement 
to make a visible improvement, a, a visible improvement uh, to the public. And so how do you determine what's an improved aesthetic or functionality? Uh, it does depend on opinions of people, but with seven people, six or seven people, most of whom have experience in working with business districts, um, we think we can come to a, uh, an opinion that, um, that can be uh, respected. Is, um, and I, this is a, obviously this is a grant program. It isn't, as, as Commissioner D'Amelio noted, this has nothing to do with whether people have the right to build something or do right. something. They'd go, either they have already the right to do it or they could seek a variance if they went to the zoning board. Right. Um, but for purposes of being able to, um, to have the grant, are, are other municipalities, are you comfortable that that level of discretion uh, with, within your group of volunteers um, is, um, uh, has, has been successful in other areas, there haven't been challenges to it, uh, anything like that, um, where people may, you know, say what's in the eyes of the beholder isn't, you know, necessarily right or wrong. Yeah, uh, well, I think it varies in different communities as to how specific they, their standards are, and again, if there's an historic district, it becomes a much more strict thing. Um, but there's a fair amount of uh, discretion involved um, and, and uh, kind of subjective judgment in terms of what is a visible improvement in the appearance of a building. So um, we would not be the only program that had that kind of a, a vagueness to the, that standard, but. Um, I think it's a, it, it would not be the only one looking at it that way. In other programs and other municipalities, yes, please, Ms. Angel. Um, I mean, we want to give the grant, so I think right. what we would do is work with the business. So let's say if they have a design and we say, you know, there's some good elements to it, but, you know, if we saw something where we thought that that's way too big or it's, it's gaudy or the materials aren't very nice, we would work with them. We would, let's work together to make something that we all can agree is, is attractive. So we would really try to give them the money. I mean, it wouldn't be that we're like, eh, go away, we don't like yours. It wouldn't be like that. We would be saying, how about you try this? How about we do this, you know? So I, I think there is, it's unlikely that there's gonna be a lot of businesses that are turned away. I'm thinking that most of them could work with us unless they have an idea that just doesn't meet the, the, the requirements and I would tell them that in advance so if they're gonna if they're thinking oh I thought I could do a sidewalk you know I'll say yeah that's not included but I think if it was a sign for example we could work with them to make the sign appropriate There's, sorry there are certain things that we have identified as ineligible uh, and I think that would preclude a lot of the differences of opinion that might be between an applicant and the grants committee you know, such as uh, digital signs, for instance, or plastic facades and, uh, uh, and, and then interior or roofing or sidewalks. I mean, it, it eliminates a lot of things that could be contentious. With the exception of funding this, is there anything else that, um, uh, that Discover Haverford needs from or requires of the township itself? For this program? Yes. I mean, I mean, you don't need legislation from us or an ordinance no. or some kind no, of any kind of historic district. No, and I think having two district. township people on the committee is really valuable. I mean, that obviously there's time involved there, and I think that's going to be important that we're working together. Kelly obviously has the zoning knowledge that I don't have, and so I would be leaning on her for that. And, you know, I think I feel good about it. I, I think it's yeah. going to be a great program. Sounds true. Can I address something that you asked about, Cherry? Um, you asked about, you know, would had not be eligible, and absolutely, um, that was really clear from the from the beginning that Amy said, like, I don't want it to be just, you know, a certain area. But um, we did say in the guidelines that businesses that um, collaborate with their neighbors would have priority. It doesn't mean that had had not wouldn't get it. I mean, we probably will have enough money to give out a lot of grants, so I'm not worried about that, but we're kind of encouraging businesses, you know, like if there are several in a row, 
that need a good paint job, um, then maybe they could do it together and bid it together. You know, it just, it seems like we could coordinate things a little bit better. For example, like in Lanark, um, Sherry, you know the, the back of those businesses in, by the municipal lot is, is hideous. And I've just often thought, I wish we could just get that whole back. They're like, you know, this is painted this way and this is, and then there's air conditioners, you know, and patches and it's just really awkward. And so something like that, if they got together all six businesses and said, look, we want to paint that. It's street facing, even though it's the back of their businesses. Um, we would give priority to a, to a, a group of them that were doing something together. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I, I don't think I under, I didn't appreciate the amount of funds that we ha would have available. And so it, I think that we're probably fine. I, yeah. I don't think you're going to be turning down businesses. No, I don't really see that happening. One, one uh, I think, area that we uh, anticipate uh, could be confusing is the question of signage. And so Kelly uh, went to great lengths to summarize the township ordinances uh, applying to signage. And so that's an appendix to the instructions that will go out to the public, um, which could eliminate a lot of questions. And, and again, this whole program is voluntary on the part of the applicant. It's not, you know, no other thing that they're uh, looking for the township for permission to do is contingent on this, or vice versa. So it's, um, uh, you know, if they want to, they can apply, and this would be an incentive for them to invest in their property. Again, they have to put the money up themselves and we would match it. It's not like just a giveaway. They have to have skin in the game, but it's purely voluntary on the part of the business. If I may say something, Mr. President. Please. Um, so I was wondering about, it sounds like you think that there's going to be enough money for the amount of applicants that you'll receive. But so I was wondering, um, will the applicants be assessed in order that you receive them? Is that the intention? Yeah, yes, but I think Amy could address the phases that were anticipated. <clears throat> yes, that's what we envision. So as we said, there's funding in the budget for 25, theoretically. So we would accept the first 25, have them evaluated. If they are all eligible and all going to be recipients, then we would close that phase and come back to the board and see if it's the will of the board to grant additional funding from ARPA to open up a phase two. Did we say 10 in the first round? Rounds, yeah. In the first round. Okay. Other than phase, okay. Right. So 10 in the first round. Just to keep it manageable since we get through once. Can, can I interject? So um, I, I'm very glad that you included something that allows for collaboration between adjacent businesses to coordinate design elements, because I think that's really critical. Because if you have just one business design, redo their, their facade and the two adjacent ones do not, that could be an eyesore, to be quite honest. And so I really like this um, that you've included that. I wonder if it would even be useful to to almost like privilege that so that you have an entire district that has got a facade improvement because that could have a, a larger impact. And this kind of brings me, I'm thinking about my teaching, and it always takes groups longer to get coordinated than individuals on projects. So I'm wondering if, um, if you really do want to encourage collaboration between adjacent businesses, whether you set a deadline and then you evaluate however many applications you've received, because it does take this, this, like students, a lot longer to work together, put together a good project proposal than just one person. So I just put that out there. Thank you, and I'll just add that as we were going through this, we were thinking of having a start and finish for this phase one either hitting 10 grant applications or the close of a certain day. We were floating around February 28th, but as I said, I think we're more realistically a month behind. So that may very well come into play, as you said. And I think one of the things that can happen is um, a, a business might do a facade improvement with our program, and then the ne next store would say, 
wow, maybe I want to do, you know, I hadn't thought about it or I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it, but now that I see it, I want to do something like that. Um, so it could happen that way so that it's kind of a, a domino effect, but I see what you're saying. You know, we could, I think doing it this way, the first round would be good because we're kind of getting our feet wet and going through the process, but then there might be a way to look at it differently after the first yeah. round. Um, yes, and as Don mentioned, we did speak about, you know, whether making it more district-centric, but we really did not want to exclude anyone. Any, any commercial business should be eligible, and we, that's what we decided to go forward with. I mean, I was, questions. I was just going to echo Sherry. I, too, thought that perhaps having a, an end date um, would be better just for the sake of those who are procrastinators. I wouldn't want them to, um, if it's a great project, be excluded because they weren't in the first 10 to submit. Um, so that was just my initial thought. Um, just, to, just to end, we are finalizing some of the administrative details, so we'll incorporate that into, into the final. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Angel, Mr. Kelly. Ms. Cuthbertson, um, all of your uh, volunteers and uh, members of that group uh, appreciate very much that presentation and look forward to its implementation. Uh, the, next, uh, the next agenda item, I will entertain a motion. To table it. The discussion of the establishing an ad hoc library committee. <laughs> okay, there's a motion and a second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. The, table, the uh, discussion is tabled for the next uh, meeting. I will now move to commissioner committee updates. Uh, is there any uh, committee that would like to report? Actually, I will report first as uh, president of the board, one of the duties that falls on me to share with my vice president um, is a, uh, uh, an evaluation and configuration and reconfiguration of uh, committee assignments among us commissioners. Um, uh, Madam Vice President and I went through that today and expect to um, share uh, with our colleagues um, our, uh, our proposed committee assignments probably within the next 24 hours. So um, uh, if any a uh, commissioner who has uh, up until now been presiding over a committee has anything to report on any committee updates. I invite Mr. President, I'll, the Bureau of Fire monthly report was forwarded to me today by Chief Hatton, who's the chair of the Bureau of Fire this year. The Hanford Township Bureau of Fire responded to 66 incidents in the month of December of 2021. The membership response total for members responding to calls was 1,442 members. The average response per call was 21.8 members. Weekly combined training hours was 480 hours. All fire companies conducted their Santa Claus runs for the residents. Fire companies sadly participated in a funeral detail for Police Sergeant Kevin Redding. Our prayers are with the Redding family. And we'd also like to thank the community for its continued support of the fire companies. And that's their report for, this, for the month of December. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wexler. Are there any other committee reports? I'll move to the next agenda item and invite Chief Viola to give the police department's update. Evening, Chief. Thank you, Commissioner. Oh, wrong one, sorry. No crime happened in the last month. That is that is great news. We had 12 juvenile arrests, that's for the uh, Chief's report for December uh, 2021. We had 12 criminal arrests, zero juvenile arrests, 109 traffic citations were issued, 13 non-traffic citations, and 37 written warnings, 441 uh, automated parking tickets were issued. Aggravated assault, 400 block of Glendale Road, the apartments. Uh, police responded to an intoxicated bail and J building. Uh, the officers observed the door to unit was removed from its hinges, uh, located the defendant sleeping in the rear bedroom. Uh, he did resist arrest, spit, and kick at the officers. Uh, stolen car at 19 East Eagle Road. Uh, delivery driver left uh, his keys in the car and was taken while he was making his delivery. 
uh, water block at Tunbridge. Car was to stolen, uh, 2013 Land Rover, uh, sometime in the overnight hours. We had six attempts of uh, theft from vehicles. Three of them were in the reserve. Uh, once again, we're going through uh, that while people are in the reserve walking their dogs uh, or in or working out, the windows are smashed. Uh, what's happening is they look inside the car, see a purse or something valuable, uh, break the window and grab it and drive away. So this reoccurs. We haven't had one of these in quite some time and they're starting up again. So I encourage everyone, if you're out, uh, working out or, or, or in the reserve for a reason or walking your a dog in the uh, dog park uh, to keep your valuables with you and don't leave them in the car. Um, you don't block a wood bond, resident reported theft in progress. Uh, she saw a white male dressed all in black and fled the area. Uh, 400 block of North Manoa, a 2019 Lincoln was entered and $20 in US bills were taken. Uh, canine usage, uh, request of Upper Derby PD, what was for Valvard and canine bar, did conduct an open air sniff of a black Toyota. He did alert to the presence of narcotics. Um, on 12-2, canine Bodie and Officer McLaughlin assisted Upper Derby PD with the shooting and homicide scene. On um, 12-9 again, the agent uh, police requested canine assistance, tracking several suspects who fled on foot after a failed carjacking attempt involving a firearm. Uh, 1214, a wood, uh, unit block of wood by K9 Django, Django was deployed for track for a theft with negative results. And on 1219, uh, Officer Linker and K9 Django did assist Radner uh, on I 476, locating a subject who fled on foot after a motor vehicle crash. The suspect, suspect surrendered after an announcement was made. And that announcement was, is K9, uh, we're going to let the K9 loose. It usually works when they know the dog's coming. So that's my report. Uh, Chief, um, I just recently was made aware of, of an issue that somebody had in Haverford Township, and I think when they reported it, they found out some other people have dealt with this as well. People whose um, addresses are changed without their knowledge, their mail is forwarded to another site. Um, any scams like that been brought to your attention? I haven't seen any like that where mail has been forwarded. It's the first time I'm really hearing it. Was that reported to us or? I believe it was. Okay, um, I'm and not I, aware I, of it. This isn't to put you on the spot, but it's as I understand uh, from uh, as I understand from this person who described it to me, the post office does have a system where they will alert people to the mail that they have each day, and if anybody. Um, is, finds themselves a victim of the scam or worries that their mail is being interrupted, they should uh, contact their post office. Um, and uh, I think that it's not that the post office stops this, but they are able to alert you as to the mail that you're supposed to get, um, because I believe the post office photographs everything that goes through. Um, but this, I heard of five instances in Haverford Township really? where uh, where, where either a change of address form was put in or a change of address or, or a forwarding order um, that, the, uh, that the homeowners or the mail recipients didn't know about and uh, their bank statements, their credit card statements, whatever was in their mail was directed to another site without their knowledge. So, um, well, My experience with that, I, I was under the assumption you had to go to the post office and sign a form and they would look for, ask for identification when that Happens. I don't know if you can do that online or not. I'm not familiar with so that. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure these people check in with you. Please. I may be missing a step. I just wondering in describing it to you whether it rang a bell. No, it didn't, not uh, Commissioner. Chief, just with the break-ins at the reserve, um, in the past, uh, this seemed to be a gang or it, right. is it seem like that again or it, it, it appears that way. It, it works in waves. It's not just us who experience it, other townships. Also experienced, you could almost see it coming uh, as the as the reports come out from the surrounding townships and through our, our information sources that uh, you see it coming. So uh, I would expect more uh, because they're here again and they disappear and go God knows where in the country and and, uh, and do their thing. So like I said, I encourage everyone don't leave valuables in the car. If we we've, we've talked about several years ago about monitoring the parking lots out there, has any more thought been given to that. It's been a high crime area for about three or four years now. That, that's uh, correct. Wi-Fi cameras are generally low cost and available for grants. And it just seems to make sense that we should get, get with the Mr. program. Barber, I think we had talked about that before. Am I correct? I don't know where that ended up yeah. for something we should explore. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> I think that needs to go on the front burner. It, it has been a problem for quite some time, I agree. Okay, thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Chief. Uh, next item is our Township Auditor Update. Hey guys, first I want to send my thoughts, condolences, and everything else out to the police department and the staff over the loss of Officer Redding. And that's very sad and uh, tragic, and I can't imagine what you guys have been going through dealing with that loss. Um, unfortunately, I think we've lost like something like 400 some officers in the pandemic nationally. Um, so it's been particularly hard on police departments. Um, that being said too, I also encourage everybody um, to, that has not gotten vaccinated to, uh, to get vaccinated. I also want to congratulate Judy and Larry on being named uh, um, VP and President uh, respectively. And Larry, that's a very fitting position for you because uh, being President requires the most talking and you like to talk the most. So I think it's a good spot for you. Um, I reviewed the expenses and warrants for this meeting. I found no irregularities and all my questions were answered to my satisfaction. I also want to say too, um, I'll give a big thanks to the, to the uh, rec department and uh, in particular, Jesse Hart, um, because uh, I'm a rookie coach for Havertown uh, Hoops. And I gotta say like they have to do with all the kids and athletes and getting all the facilities, everything ready. Like there's a lot that they've been doing and they've been doing very well getting everything organized. Um, lastly, somehow between uh, December's meeting and this meeting, the Eagles are in the playoffs. So go birds. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, I will now invite up uh, Township Manager Berman to give the Township Manager update. Commissioners, good evening again. Um, I'm going to share a presentation with you on my screen if I can. So I'm going to talk to you tonight about some upcoming PICO projects in town. Um, we are all well aware and very frustrated by the ongoing utility work, not only in Haverford Township, but all over the communities that we travel through. It seems that no matter where you turn, there's gonna be a utility project blocking your way. These ongoing projects here in the township that remain unfinished and likely will not have complete restoration until spring uh, are all over town, but some of the notable ones are in Paddock Farms, Rockwood Drive, Marion Golf Manor, and in the vicinity of Campbell Avenue. We're monitoring the conditions of these temporary repairs that PICO has done. We have to keep an eye on those trenches. We have to make sure that they're smooth until they can get to that final restoration. If you have any issues, you really should reach out to PICO directly, but of course, by all means, you can contact the township. So despite all our efforts to coordinate the road work, our road work with PICO and Aqua, PICO informed us in October of their plans to continue a major replacement of existing natural gas mains and related equipment throughout the region during 2022. It's going to include no underground pipe made of modern materials, which is more durable. It's gonna enhance safety and improve service reliability. So they're calling this the Bare Steel Service Replacement Program. And they're gonna replace the, some mains and also in Haverford Township alone, they're going to replace approximately seven to 800 bare steel services. So this is the gas main that runs, uh, the gas line that runs from the street to your home. And so they have to do seven or 800 of those in Haverford Township by the end of this year. It's part of a larger commitment that PICO has with the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission. And it's aimed at preventing uh, future gas leaks and mitigating risk within the entire PICO gas system. So according to PICO, this work is critical to the safe and reliable gas service that we've all grown to appreciate. PICO's schedule for 2022 is particularly aggressive here in the township. As I said, there are seven or 800 individual services that they need to replace. And there are a number of other areas where they have to replace mains in the street. So PICO, PICO has already started notifying some of the residents of the work that will affect those residents. And I'm gonna get into that momentarily. The majority of this work will be outside of the home and it's gonna be on streets, sidewalks, 
possibly some lawns. Um, and of course, PICO is gonna be required to restore all of those areas upon completion of their work. To ensure the work is completed safely, PICO is gonna to need to actually get in people's houses. So they're gonna to need to turn off the gas service temporarily for about four to eight hours, and uh, they'll be contacting residents to make an appointment. PICO is going to need access to the appliances and the equipment in the homes early in the day, and then later in the day, they'll have to get back in there to restore services and relight any of those appliances. So at that appointment, they're also going to relocate any indoor gas meters to the exterior of the house. And this re relocation work, PICO tells us, is necessary for the safety of PICO employees, contractors, customers, and communities. And it's mandatory, according to PICO, per the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission. So I may need the commissioner's help. As these projects go forward, if PICO can't get into the homes, it could delay final restoration of the roads in front of those homes. So we're gonna to try to work in collaboration with PICO to make sure people know that PICO needs to get in there and until they do so, some of the disruption in front of the homes is not going to be finally restored. So as Mr. always, Norman. if you suspect a leak or smell gas inside or out, just leave the area please and call PICO's emergency line at 1-800-841-4141. Mr. Berman, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Are they going, they're going to shut off the gas in the middle of the winter? No, the, I'm, I'm giving you the report in advance. This project is, um, they're going to be doing the mains first and they'll be back to do this work um, when, when they have the appropriate weather to do so. So no, they're not going to be turning off people's heat during the winter. That's a good okay. question and thank you. All right, no problem, thanks. I didn't know when they were gonna do it, okay. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, it's interesting that they have to actually come into the houses and actually be in the house and turn appliances off for, you said, like four to eight hours? Yes. That means the homeowners have to be home. And given that many people have, both people work, how is this going to be done? It's, yes. It's really concerning since um, most of my friends are uh, people who work si outside of the home. That's a very good question, and it is a concern for us and for PICO. And so we're going to have to be working with PICO to communicate well with the residents. And that's why I expect that PICO is going to enlist our help to make that communication. Is there any chance that they can do some of this work on the weekends? Because I can't imagine employers letting people to take vacation time to do this. Understood. We could certainly raise that question. And, and frankly, I expect that they're gonna have to do some of it on the weekend because obviously I'm working here and I'm not at home to do the same thing that you're referring to. Mr. Berman, I, I think that uh, commissioner, that the person doesn't have to be home for the eight hours, uh, the work, is on the street for eight hours. They have to relight the appliances at the end of the day. I think there'll be probably more, a, a much smaller window. That's from the meetings that we've had uh, with Pico. That's my understanding. Thank you for that clarification. Because yeah, they'll, they'll be able to tell them what, what, what times to be, to be home. So that could work, work out too. So returning to the report that I started, um, the first area, uh, one of the areas that they'll be working in, uh, Commissioner D'Amelio is in the first ward. And these are mains along Dorchester, Sunny Hill, Briarwood, and Stanton Roads. And so the work in the roads will be conducted from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through five, Friday. Um, I'm going to move on. You to know, I, I just want to. I just. I, I want to agree with Commissioner Krupp. Uh, Commissioner Forsty Grupp, Yes. Yeah, I, I need to agree with her because, you know, they're not, what, what's the window? Even, even half a day is a lot of time. So they could say from, from two to four, you know, or two to five, you got to be home from two o'clock. So you still, got, you may still lose time. I just, I, I, I don't like that. Oh, I couldn't agree more. We will certainly put that request uh, for flexibility in with PICO um, obviously, they can't finish these projects until they get into the homes that they need to get into. So 
this is going to be, uh, they're going to have to have some flexibility, of course, Mr. D'Amelio. Yeah, I mean, I would think, uh, you know, if they just narrow it down. Oh, know, absolutely. Maybe an hour before or something. I mean, they, get, they have to really understand that people would have to leave work or take the day off to, to even meet their request for that time slot. You know, it could be one to four. Because, I mean, and I get it. They have so many, so many different mains and issues to deal with when they're doing that work. I get it. But it's still hard on, on the homeowner. Agreed. So in the, uh, I'm going to move forward in the presentation. The next slide, which may be a little difficult to see, and by the way, this will all be coming out uh, via constant contact and social media and on our website. Um, in the second and ninth wards, there are a number of areas where they'll be working. And on the screen, I'm showing the area of Furlong Avenue, Bonaire Road, Steel Road, Ormond Concord, uh, uh, Country Club Lane, Greenview Lane, and Westwood Park Drive. And also in the second and in the eighth ward, there'll be work on East Park Road, Landaff Road, Tenby Road, Lansdowne Avenue, Foster Avenue, Juniper Road, Lewis Road, Spring Road, and Meadowbrook Road. Commissioner Quinn, you won't be left out. <laughs> there'll be work on Edgewood Avenue, Kathmere Road, Brookline Boulevard, Sagamore, Kenmore, and Lenox. So when they're working in town, this board adopted a new ordinance last year, which requires a full width mill and overlay instead of those half mill overlays. So wherever there had been required a half mill and overlay at the conclusion of these utility projects previously, last year this board adopted an ordinance that requires the full width. And so at least the roads will be restored to the full width when the work is complete. Dave, I know I've sent, sent you some of uh, the emails from people asking when will they come back to, to, re, to redo their end of their dry driveways, and that's what you meant by, by that, right? The, the work will be done once, once they're all done inside the homes. Yes, typically the final restoration is the very last thing, and um, we, have, we know that PICO has contractors that do the work in the street and outside the home, and then PICO will be involved to do the work inside the home to relight, Mm -hmm. and make the final connections. Um, the final restoration is typically done um, through a different contract with PICO. So there's a lot of juggling going on here and we don't, do, we don't expect them to do that final restoration until we're concluding all of this work. Thank you. The last thing, and I don't have it on a slide, is uh, I received a, a letter today from PICO informing me, Commissioner Trombetta, <laughs> that in order to improve their reliability and resiliency in your ward, they are going to replace uh, the working crews upgrading and installing new equipment, including poles and tree hardened wires. That's equipment and wires that will be uh, able to withstand fall, hopefully able, better able to withstand fallen trees and branches. And that's going to be along Marple Road and Darby Creek Road. And so the vegetation work, so they're going to have to do some vegetation to install these larger poles, will begin in spring. Um, and the project is expected to be completed sometime in September-ish. And of course, all of this is weather permitting, COVID permitting. I mean, that's another concern with PICO getting into people's houses. Um, and of course, they have every safety plan in the book, and we're going to expect them to follow it. But it's still a concern, and it's understood. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. And that's the end of my report for this evening. Uh, Mr. Berman, I have a question for you. Um, not related to this. Um, there are uh, some municipalities in Delaware County that were seeking an injunction against the, um, the county health department in regards to health inspections and uh, in the fact that the county's taking them over and maybe not doing them yet. So I just what is going on in Haverford? Thank you. The, the latest information I have from the county with regard to the health department is that um, it's, it's true that they notified every municipality that they were starting up a health department and they'd be operational by January 1st. Obvious, obviously, that hasn't happened. So the, the plan is this. 
for in terms of inspections and licenses for restaurants, the township is going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to license restaurants for those health inspections and we'll perform those inspections. And the county folks have assured us that they're not going to double bill our residents. So the license this year is from Haverford Township. We're going to continue to operate as if nothing's changed, but when they're up and running, we'll cease our operations in terms of health inspections and the county will take over those inspections. And how about, I mean, in our budget, we hadn't budgeted to have somebody doing this. So those we did. expenses, we did or? We did, we have, okay. we have budgeted for someone to do this. We're okay. And that individual who does most of the health inspections currently will be able to transition into another inspector position within the code enforcement department. So we're good. Good, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Uh, we will now entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, a motion to approve the minutes. I second. Okay, I have a motion uh, by uh, Commissioner Forsty Grupp and a uh, second by uh, Commissioner, Par uh, Commissioner Quinn. Um, Please call the roll. Commissioner D'Amelio. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Mr. President. Uh, Commissioner D'Amelio. I'd like to ask that we add to the agenda this evening the retention of Jim Byrne on two legal matters, one being the billboards and the other a confidential township matter that he's been involved in. I'll second that. So um, we have a motion and a second to add an item to the agenda. All in favor of adding this item to the agenda, please say aye. 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 Be opposed. aye. Uh, so, uh, the motion, uh, the agenda has been, um, uh, the item has been added to the agenda. Uh, I will now entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we retain Jim Byrne to represent us on two Haverford Township legal matters, one being the Haverford billboard and the second being a confidential township matter. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, this is something that we have discussed in executive session. It's appropriate for executive session, but the decision can be made here in public. Uh, Mr. Berman, uh, unless anybody has any questions or discussion, uh, please call the roll. Commissioner D'Amelio. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. What is now item 11, approval of warrants? We will entertain a motion. Mr. President, make a motion to approve the following warrant. Number one of 2022, totaling $4,608,855.65. General and sewer fund payroll for December 9th, 2021 in the amount of 689,532 and 97 cents. General and sewer fund payroll for December 23rd, 2021 in the amount of $777,356 and eight cents. General and sewer fund payroll for December 31st, 2021 in the amount of $27,370 and 30 cents. General and sewer fund payroll for January 6th, 2022 in the amount of $1,408,442.42. General fund disbursements, number one, 2022 in the amount of $1,133,927.04. Sewer fund disbursements, number one, 2022 in the amount of $241,175.49. Community Development Block Grant Fund Disbursement Number One 2022 in the amount of $35,551.72. Capital Pro Projects Fund Disbursement Number One 2022 in the amount of $125,973.30. American Rescue.
plan fund disbursement number one, 2022, in the amount of $157,262.03. Credit card statement ending December 27, 2021, in the amount of $12,264.30. Second. There is a motion and second. Please call the roll. Commissioner D'Amelio. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. New item 12, uh, proposed settlement agreement. Board will entertain a motion. First, I'll make a motion to approve the Hafford Township participation in the proposed settlement agreement with Johnson & Johnson, Janssen Pharmaceuticals, and Janssen Pharmaceuticals, Inc., and to authorize the township manager slash secretary to execute all required documents to include the draft opioids trust and alloc allocation order. Second. Motion by Commissioner Wexler and a second by Commissioner Hart. Is there any questions or comments? This is something that has been discussed um, in executive session. And uh, for further discussion, would you call the roll? Commissioner D'Amelio. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. No. Item 13. Ordinance number P23 of 2021, Skadium Cafe Lease Renewal. Yes, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to adopt the second re 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 reading of uh, the ordinance number P23-2021 P P uh, to authorize the lease of certain grounds between the town township of ha ha Haverford and Jeff and Sons LLC. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion on this point? Mr. Berman, if you'd call the roll. Commissioner D'Amelio. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Uh, what is now item 14, ordinance number P24-2021. Mr. President, I would like to make this motion. Uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Fester Group? I'd like to make this motion. Yes, please. Okay. I will make a motion to adopt the second reading of ordinance number P24-2021, authorizing the township to enter an easement agreement for portions of the property located at 365 to 403 Westchester Pike for the establishment of a bikeway easement. Second. There is a motion and a second. Uh, do we have any discussion? Berman, would you call the roll? Commissioner D'Amelio. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Item number 15, it's a traffic ordinance, ordinance number P1 of 2022. Mr. President, a motion to approve the first reading of <coughs> ordinance number P1 2022, authorizing traffic restrictions on the following highways. Special purpose parking zone in front of 142 Juniper Road. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Berman, would you call the roll? Commissioner D'Amelio. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Item number 16 is resolution number 2247 of 2022. Mr. President, I'll make the motion to adopt resolution 2247, 2022, resolving that the Board of Commissioners of the Municipality 
Delaware County hereby adopt and submit to the Department of Environmental Protection for its approval as an update of the official plan of Hafford Township, the above referenced Act 537 plan update. The Township hereby assures the Department of the complete and timely implement implementation of the said plan as required by law. Second. Uh, Mr. Township Manager, is there anyone to report on this? We'll give you a brief report if Mr. Pannoni is present. The board, the board might remember a couple years ago, Delcora entered into an agreement with Aqua PA to sell their assets to, to Aqua. I think that's not called Essential. It was called Aqua. So the first 537 plan approval we did a, a couple of years ago was to just approve that, our portion of approving that sale. This is an update to their plan that involves infrastructure changes and improvements. Delcora currently sends a portion of their flow to City of Philadelphia, Southwest plant. Oh, sorry. The, the infrastructure will be uh, completed to actually reverse that flow. Anything going to the city of Philadelphia will now be reversed, come back down to Chester. Uh, it's actually a really interesting project. The, the short version is a very deep, large tunnel that'll go almost parallel to 291. And then there's some modest plan upgrades too. So this is our part of the 537 plan proposed by Delcora to make those modifications. Infrastructure improvements. Any questions? Is it your recommendation that we approve this resolution? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Pannoni. Oh, I'm sorry. And a planning commission already made a recommendation to approve it also. Our planning commission. Thank you for adding that. If anyone couldn't hear him over the microphone, he said that our planning commission has also looked at this plan and approved it. Uh, Mr. Berman. Uh, unless anybody else has any questions or comments, uh, please call the roll. Commissioner D'Amelio? Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp? Yes. Commissioner McCluskey? Yes. Commissioner Cavender? Yes. Commissioner Quinn? Yes. Commissioner Hart? Yes. Commissioner Wexler? Yes. Commissioner Trombetta? Yes. Commissioner Holmes? Yes. Item 17, resolution 2249 of 2022. <laughs> Mr. President, a motion to adopt resolution number 2249-2022 that the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford, County of Delaware, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, in accordance with the Municipal Records Manual, hereby authorizes the disposition of public records. Second. Um, anyone have any questions or comments? Uh, I do have a question, uh, Mr. Manager. Is this um, is this a one-time disposition of records, or is this now a are we approving a manner of doing it going forward? We for year, right? We ask you to yes, that's correct. We ask the board to adopt a resolution of this nature just about every year. Um, we're required to have your authorization to destroy any records that meet the threshold of destruction, the the years required under the Pennsylvania Historic Museum Commission. Thank you. Can anyone else have any questions or comments? I have a question. Who who destroys the documents? And is it in done in a secure fashion, et cetera, et cetera? The uh, the evidence is no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, <laughs> it's managed by Amy Cuthbertson and the company that does it for us is Wiggins Shredding. Does anybody else want to put Mr. Berman on the spot? Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Berman, if you would, please call the roll. Commissioner D'Amelio. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Uh, item number 18 on the agenda is uh, a purchase and a contract award. I will entertain a motion. 
Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the purchase of four 2022 Chevrolet Tahoe police vehicles from Whitmoyer Auto Group. 10,001 East Main Street, Mount Joy, PA, under CoStar's contract 13111 for a total price of $166,000. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Chief, how long do these vehicles usually? I'm sorry, Commissioner. How long did these vehicles last? You know. Well, we, it's usually about five or six years in patrol, and then we push them down to detectives, and then if the township needs them, uh, they come upstairs to township staff. So we probably get 10 years or more out of them. Yeah, my concern is we keep passing uh, climate action plans and saying we're going to be 100% um, electric basically by 2035, and we're, we're continuing to buy vehicles that are not helping the climate. I won't disagree with you on that, but I think that uh, with, with what we did last year, we bought uh, another uh, hybrid vehicle. Uh, we have some concerns of the operation of that vehicle and the durability. Uh, we've been in contact with a neighboring police department, a large neighboring police department that had two of them, had to get rid of them after two years because of the constant breakdowns. Uh, their mechanics and our mechanics cannot fix them. They have to go back to the dealer when they have issues and they get tied up there for weeks on end. Uh, we have durability uh, with, with the larger cars. Uh, as things progress and the electric and hybrid cars become more durable and more uh, acceptable for police work, we would definitely move forward with them. It just isn't the right time, no, Commissioner. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Manager, if you'd call the roll. Commissioner D'Amelio. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCloskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. No. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Chair will entertain another uh, motion or a, co a contract? A motion to award a two year, um, two duty tow contract to KNS Towing and Recovery, 1375 Lawrence Road, Hereford, PA, 19083, and a two year impound contract to KNS Towing and Recovery, 1375 Lawrence Road, Havertown, PA, 19083 and direct paint and collision, 1000 North Eagle Road, Evertown, PA, 19083. Both impound yards have been inspected and meet all of the requirements per code. Impound yards will operate on an every other month rotation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Berman, would you call the roll? Commissioner D'Amelio. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Uh, we now open the floor again to a continuation of the Citizens Forum for any non agenda item. If there's anybody in the audience, uh, who would like to uh, speak on any topic? They are invited to come forward. Yes. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bob Dignazio. I live at 606 Country Club Lane and I'm the vice president of a sports event company as well. I spoke last month, but as we have a new board and the golf season is right around the corner, I'm here to reiterate concerns from residents on my street regarding our neighboring golf course. The neighboring Lanark Country Club's ninth hole is in violation of two sections of the zoning code. This nonconformity directly leads to trespass, nuisance, property damage, and is a significant safety hazard to neighbors, a, num a number of whom have been injured. I'll briefly summarize. First, the course is short out of bounds fence is both immediately on our property line and does not stop errant falls, both of which are violations of 
Section 703 of the Zoning Code. Secondly, Section 718 requires a 30-foot buffer that must give, quote, maximum protection to an abutting residential district. The property damage caused by errant balls traveling at high speeds illustrates that there's no protection. Thankfully, the code also provides a very simple solution and requires the township to act. After outlining exact height requirements for tennis court fences, Section 703 states, appropriate fences for any other type of recreational use may be required at the discretion of the zoning officer. The type of any required fence shall be approved by the zoning officer with the intent that said fence shall act as a protection to adjacent properties against interference from stray balls. Township code says that the term shall is mandatory and not discretionary. It got me thinking, why does the code provide specific fencing requirements for tennis, but not other sports like baseball or golf? The answer is because every tennis court has the same dimensions. They're easy to regulate. On the other hand, baseball and golf dimensions vary greatly. In regards to the par five ninth hole that abuts our um, properties, the tee points at our homes. Balls travel as high as 100 feet in the air, but some of the trees are only 30 feet high. We are talking about one side of one fairway on an 18 hole golf course. This is equivalent to a baseball backstop fence. While the effect to gameplay is minimal, it fulfills the legal obligation to protect neighboring properties and residents from stray balls. A net is not an unusual concept either as the club already has a huge and very visible 700 foot long net that protects its own golfers from errant driving range balls. It protects people who pay money to play golf on the course. On the other hand, we and our children are on our own properties, and we have no visibility of incoming balls when they strike. At the end of the day, the discretion that Section 703 requires is simple. Is there a legal trespass and nuisance caused by stray balls? Yes. Would a net eliminate or significantly reduce this interference? Yes. Are there any other options other than moving the tee or closing the hole entirely? No. The course of action laid out by Section 703 is clear. A protective net is required. I'll close by adding that there is one other sport, in addition to baseball and golf, in which hard, fast-traveling objects leave the playing surface. It's ice hockey. And for years, rinks did not have protective netting. And that all changed in 2002, when an 11-year-old girl was hit by a punk at an NHL game and died. And now every single ice rink in North America has protective netting. I ask on behalf of my neighbors that the new township officials in this room review the matter and bring it to a logical and lawful resolution before the golf season begins this spring. We simply can't afford a tragedy in our neighborhood. Thank you. Can I just ask a quick question? Where is the ninth hole? Country Club the, Lane. The, the ninth hole's, yeah, it's Country Club Lane. It's, you're looking at a map of the course. If you've been on the course, it's east of the driving range. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else who'd like to speak? Yes, it's Alvary. Michelle Alvarez, 134 Hastings Avenue. I'd just like to thank all of you for passing this easement ordinance for the shopping center on Westchester Pike that's going to give us the necessary space to extend our Penzi Trail. Between these easements and the easements on um, Manoa Road for the couple of homes that are going to have temporary easements for us to put the bridge, the walk over, bicycle over bridge over Manoa Road, this is just monumental in this township. We are going to connect from the YMCA all the way down to Westchester Pike. And it's just awesome. So I want to thank you very much on behalf of the Parks Board for getting this ordinance done and so we can move forward and get these projects moving. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Alvarez.
Do we have uh, any other citizens? Mr. Anderson. Hello there again. Uh, Ross Anderson, 220 Heatherwood Road. I uh, just want to say um, I want to support the guy who, um, sorry, I forgot your name, about the golf course. Um, well, I'm not a member at Lanark. I am a member at uh, McCall, and I can't tell you how much damage my slice has done to Upper Darby Township. Do not drive on Lynn Boulevard where I'm teeing off. I can tell you that. Um, but also, too, uh, with regard to vehicles, I get what you're saying, Jerry, but I mean, the electric stuff is, it's almost there. It's just not there just yet. So I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't buy like a 20 year vehicle, something that might be good for like 10 years or five years, because electric vehicles are very close, but not here yet. But it's definitely something to be thinking about, like what's coming up down the pipe of vehicles. And also don't know, we also have autonomous driving coming too in the next few years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Would anyone else like to speak? We'll move on to new business. Does any township, uh, does any commissioner have any new business they would like to introduce? Hearing none, we will move to other business. Um, Mr. D'Amelio. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I really don't have anything other than um, my thoughts and prayers for every every uh, uh, resident that died in the Philadelphia fires and in New York. Uh, it's been a, a you know pretty bad uh, couple of weeks for those types of fires, and really those firefighters that uh, saved a lot of lives and, and tried to save lives. And if you see some of the images, uh, they really are heroes. And you know we have volunteer firefighters. And they're, uh, they're just as dedicated. And uh, I just want to thank all of them for everything that they do. And I know it's been a hard, uh, hard week or two. That's it. Thank you, Mr. D'Amelio. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to thank um, Bob Gnazio to come, for coming and talking about the golf balls, because because I would like us to look into it, see what possibilities there are, because the damage is significant. Um, I would also urge anyone who lives in Ward 2 to please subscribe to my email list. I am actively looking for people who are interested in serving in the citizen, Senior Citizens Advisory Board, and I would encourage you to email me if you are interested or to call me on my Township phone, which is and the number is posted on the township website. Also, Martin Luther King Day Jr. is coming up on Monday, and there's a wonderful opportunity to serve the township and to serve um, residents who might be struggling to put food on the table by dropping off items on um, Monday between 9 and 11.30, I believe, at the Haverford Middle School bus lane and you can find out more information on the web, I'm sure. And then one more thing, I want to put in a plug. We have a wonderful farmer's market here at Heverford Township that meets every um, uh, two Saturdays a month in the winter. And the next market is Saturday, January 26th, uh, January 22nd, from 1 to 3. And you can get the most wonderful meats and eggs and other produce and locally made products. And you get to do all your shopping outside so you can stay safe from COVID. So go to the Oakmont Farmers Market. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Uh, Mr. McCluskey, I'm just going to ask you to hold off for one second while I entertain a motion to add an item to the agenda. Second. No, I need you to do the motion. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> yes, Madam Vice President. I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda uh, to, um, and to, to senior citizen appointments from each ward. You got it. Ready. That's what I'd like. Yes. I'll second. Uh, we have a motion to second. All in favor of adding an item to the agenda? Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Um, we now have uh, uh, in the agenda, uh, ward by ward, uh, the opportunity for each commissioner to appoint um, his or her uh, respective senior citizen 
uh, committee uh, appointee. Um, I don't recall off the top of my head how many were done last week. Uh, Mr. Berman, if you have that record, would you uh, call on yes, the next? I haven't even record? looked into it. <laughs> you know who's next? I have one, but uh, mine stepped step, step down, so I talked to somebody today, and they did not say yes or no, but they will say yes, so I'll just wait to appoint mine. Okay. So I'll just do this easy. Mr. D'Amelio, have you appointed someone to the Senior Citizens Advisory Board yet? So somebody wake up, Steve. So uh, Ms. Forsty Grupp, have you appointed somebody oh, I'm to the sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was trying. I thought I, I thought I tapped it. Yeah, that's okay. Um, no. Okay. Do you I have, have someone pass. or do you want to postpone until next month? No, I have to pass. Okay. Uh, uh, Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Postpone. Okay. Commissioner McCluskey. I've already appointed somebody. Great. Thank you. Um, fourth ward. Uh, fifth ward. Ms. Cavender. Uh, Commissioner Cavender. Uh, I have appointed someone. Thanks. Oh. Uh, Commissioner Quinn. I already. Oh, that's right. You just yeah, described that you're postponing. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Hart. I've already appointed someone. Thank you. Commissioner Wexler. As have I. Commissioner Trombetta. Mr. President, I'd like to, it's my honor to appoint Peggy Murr to serve on the Senior um, Citizens Advisory Board Excellent. for a one year term. Thank you. And thank Peggy for her service. Uh, and uh, for the sixth ward, I will postpone the appointment until February. Now we can return to other business. Uh, Commissioner McCluskey. <clears throat> Thanks everybody for serving on the Senior Citizens Advisory Board. Um, look forward to doing that again next month. Uh, I would I would like this to. This time it'll uh, be on the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can go in front of me next time too. It's fine. Um, anyway, I would I would also like to offer uh, prayers and thoughts to uh, the, the victims and the families of the the fire in the Fairmount section of um, Philadelphia last week, and then in New York, um, uh, the, the the those row houses in Fairmount. Um, we lived there for about six years, right? couple blocks away and it's a uh, you know that's a I, I'm, I'm I'm very uh, I'm, I'm touched and I'm saddened tremendously for for the families and the victims and it's just a it's an awful tragedy um, I do want to thank uh, Gene Angel and Don Kelly uh, for uh, their tireless efforts uh, to make this township a better place um, and their work in the uh, matching grants and helping the township out in awarding some of that. Um, I think the overwhelming thing uh, from all of that is, as Ms. Cuthbertson mentioned and as Ms. Angel mentioned, is that we want to give away money to, to our local businesses in town. Um, so I really want to encourage everyone, uh, just as we encourage everyone, all the businesses in town to apply for grants uh, we also want to apply, encourage them to apply for um, this facade improvement. It's it's money that we're we're trying to offer, um, and we want to use it uh, in the best possible ways to to help our businesses rebound from any lag that has come from the ongoing pandemic, but also just to help with uh, business improvement in town. So hopefully, uh, word will spread and the businesses will get a lot of applications, and uh, we'll quickly move on to round two, as Ms. Cuthbertson said. Um, echo what Ms. Foster Grubb talked about the food drive on Monday. Um, also Martin Luther King Day is an opportunity to volunteer. Uh, there's tons of opportunities to volunteer uh, in the Delaware Valley. So if you, if you have the day off and uh, you're so inclined, um, take, take the opportunity to do something better for, for, our town, for our town or our community or the area. Um, and then, you know, obviously there's three of us that are, that are at home. Um, and uh, the, I think anyone who has a kid in schools has gotten a letter probably every night talking about a close contact or talking about somebody else in the grade or the class. Um, you know, just we, we all just need to keep doing everything we can to, to stopping the pandemic, to doing what, what we can, our, our small parts. Um, if, you, if, if you haven't gotten boosted yet, get boosted, get vaccinated. Um, and, you know, we're going to keep getting through this together. So uh, best wishes to anybody who is currently sick. And uh, hopefully um, this wave uh, will crest soon and, and we will move forward. 
and that's all I have for tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner McCluskey. Uh, Commissioner Cavender. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm only the third or fourth person to go and, and I'm already gonna repeat what some of my fellow commissioners have said, but um, I would like to give an official welcome to commissioners Sherry Forsykrup and Judy Trombetta, also our vice chair. Um, it's wonderful to have you aboard. I'm sorry I can't be there in person, um, but since we got to celebrate last week, that's great. Um, so I'm really looking forward to um, the next year working with all of you and serving Haverford. Um, I also uh, wanted to echo what Commissioner McCluskey said about the food drive, the MLK Junior food drive. Um, I agree there's so much going on and sometimes just getting out of our houses these days and getting out of our selves uh, and giving something back can, can be a little bit of a mood boost. So um, I too encourage everyone to do that. Um, I also want to just give a quick shout out to all of the township volunteers. Um, personally, I was just so impressed by the level of commitment and expertise for all of the people who volunteered for township boards and commissions. Um, those who were appointed, those who were reappointed, as well as those who did not get appointed. Um, it's really no small matter to commit your time to these commissions and um, I just want to officially say thank you to everyone for that. Um, and it, and on the note of COVID, um, also, yes, get your boosters, get your vaccines. Um, I wanted to give a little shout out to the school district, and that includes the teachers, the administrators, but it also includes the bus drivers, the school nurses. I have a son home now, uh, sick with COVID, and we have this great program called Test to Stay. So if you allow it, the school nurse will actually do the, the COVID testing of your child. And um, I just know they're overwhelmed right now and they're, they're short staffed and, um, and lots of kids are sick unless the teachers are sick. And, um, but we'll get through it. You know, this is, I, I do hope this is a, a crest and um, I just wanna thank everybody for their hard work. That's it for me. Thank you, Commissioner Cavender. Uh, Commissioner Quinn. Yes, um, I too would like to send my prayers and thoughts for um, the people that suffered that fire down in the city last week. And just want to thank the volunteers here in our town, uh, Bill, Bill and Steve. I know that you serve your, your fire department chief and um, just want to Tell they tell tell they tell everybody to remember to pay pay their dues to them because they do this stuff. They run out out of their homes at all times of the night, so just uh, think think about that. And um, also, yesterday was a law, law enforcement a pre appreciation day, so I would like to thank our chief and his entire entire police police department for all they they do to keep keep this town safe. So thank thank you, and. Um, I know that we have a lot of big, big, big things to get done this year, and I and I look forward to work, working with all of you. And I wel welcome my two friends here. So, so uh, I, I know that we're going to work well, well to get together. So, thank, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Quinn. Commissioner Hart. Yes, I just wanted to uh, thank Chief Iola and our police department, as well as PennDOT, who joined Commissioner Quinn and I this afternoon for a. Uh, resident meeting in regards to traffic safety and pedestrian safety on Arlington Road. I think we had some good suggestions and some steps uh, where it can move forward to try to improve, especially pedestrian safety. Um, and um, again, thank you for, for taking the time. And that's all I have. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Hart. Commissioner Wexler. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mr. Holmes. Uh, and, and thank you for your thanks. I'll, I'll respond for all the volunteers, fire department, fire departments and the firefighters. Thank you for your, your well wishes. In that note, please don't forget there's an important group that we don't thank enough. And that's the guys that are going to go out tomorrow on the coldest day that we've had in the last three years and pick up our trash, clean our sewers, here, here. and uh, repair our streetlights. That's our public works department and anybody in this township that's working outside 
uh, this week and, and next week all through the winter in harsh conditions, uh, snow removal, leaf removal. It's, it's a, we forget about those, but when your trash doesn't get picked up, that's the most phone calls that any and all of us get in a day. If your recycling gets thrown in the wrong trash bin or if it, it doesn't get picked up that afternoon, there'll be a senior citizen that will call us every day. So I thank them. I appreciate them, and I wish them well. Give them some hot chocolate tomorrow because it's going to be cold out there when they're slinging that trash into the back of the truck. So, And if a sewer line gets backed up, thank those guys as well. Also, I'd like to call out for volunteers for the Hilltop Civic Association this year. Uh, they do all our volunteer work, primarily in the Ninth Ward and the Hilltop section, all the events that they do. So please look at their website, uh, hilltopcivic.org, and pick a, pick a thing to volunteer. And welcome to all our commissioners this year. And thank you. We look forward to getting a lot of work, important work done this year. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Commissioner Wexler. Vice President Trombetta. Yes, first, I... Uh... I just wanted to extend my well wishes to Commissioner Cavender, um, hoping her son has a speedy recovery. It's always scary when you have a, a child who's sick, even if it's uh, not too serious. Um, everybody else kind of stole my thunder. I also was going to talk about Martin Luther King Jr. Day uh, being on Monday, January 17th. Um, and I was going to talk about the food drive, but I will say this, that in addition to serving your community, which I highly encourage, I also want to encourage everyone to reflect on Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy, as well as the legacy of everyone who participated in the civil rights movement. Um, on this day, and especially into the next month, February, which is uh, Black History Month, I hope you'll join me in reflecting on how we can carry on the work that remains to be done in our community. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, let me... Um... Just fill in some blanks, if I may, on the um, on the MLK food drive, food and supply drive. Um, there are still opportunities to volunteer. Um, there are still four slots left for unloading cars, organizing food, and directing traffic between 8:30 and 10:30 a.m. Uh, there is one slot from 10 to 12 for unloading cars, organizing food, and directing traffic. Um, there are five slots still needing to be filled for drivers. And from 11 a.m. to 12.30, uh, the event needs six more drivers. You can go on Sign Up Genius uh, on the internet and you can find this. Um, and just so I can let anybody know who's interested in, um, in donating, uh, not their time, but items to the event, um, the food that's acceptable, applesauce, canned goods, cereal, coffee, cookies, chips and crackers, dogs, cat food, instant rice, potatoes, jelly, mac and cheese, oatmeal, pancake, mix and syrup, pasta, and pasta sauce, peanut butter. They will not accept items in glass containers um, and they will not accept any items that are expired. Um, any cleaning supplies um, and in particular uh, baby items, uh, diapers, bottles, wipes, car seats, if you have one, books, children's clothes um, and uh, PPE is welcome as well. Um, so it, um, if, the, if, if, if the nine of us haven't provided anyone enough information about this MLK uh, food and supply drive day, I would just have to say at that point, it's not shame on us anymore. It's shame on, shame on you. Um, I, uh, in the last 10 years or so of political life, um, every year you can count on my yard uh, to be littered with signs about different candidates or different um, causes that I'm representing, but one sign has been up for a number of years and it doesn't come down no matter what the season is. Um, it is a sign that says the time is always right to do what is right. And it's a quote from Martin Luther King. Um, and it's nice to be reminded of that, not just on Monday the 17th, um, but every day of the year for everything um, that he and the people he works so hard with uh, stand for. So I appreciate Commissioner Trombetta's words about um, about that day, as well as um, what we can do as a society as we move into Black History Month in February. Um, and I wish, uh, I wish you all a very uh, happy and healthy good night. I will accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Any second? Second. So adjourned. <laughs>